we're starting to learn that there are specific inhibitors to different pathways of the complement cascade that are very effective in therapeutics. This area is uh, a, a really great example of precision medicine uh, because, the, uh, because the pathways are known so well uh, that we're able to target uh, different areas of the complement cascade very precisely, so there's, there's very little off-target effects. And I think we're going to have diseases that were very difficult to diagnose, are going to be a lot easier to diagnose, things like HELP syndrome, things like post-transplant thrombotic microangiopathies, things like atypical HUS. We're going to be able to diagnose these a lot faster. Because we can diagnose them faster, we're going to be able to put them on drugs a lot faster and hopefully have a lot better outcomes for patients. One of the, the real exciting areas is it's been very hard to, to distinguish between uh, what we call thrombotic microangiopathies, TTP, and atypical HUS. And uh, there are new assays out that can reliably distinguish between these two, two disorders. Uh, we're uh, also learning that inhibiting the complement cascade is very effective in treating uh, atypical HUS and uh, that some of these patients may not need to be on lifelong therapy if they're diagnosed rapidly. Uh, so um, the other uh, area that is very exciting is there are a number of companies and, and laboratory investigators that are working on uh, molecules uh, and antibodies that inhibit complement in very precise areas. And I think over the next three to five years, I think we're gonna be seeing some new complement inhibitors that can help treat diseases like paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, uh, that can help treat atypical HUS, and that may be useful in treating other complement-related disorders uh, where the complement cascade is actually a driver of the disease. There's only one drug that, 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 that's really used to treat uh, PNH and, and uh, atypical HUS, and it has to be given intravenously. There are, uh, there's a lot of work on uh, developing drugs that can be given either subcutaneously or even potentially taken as a pill orally. And I, I think there's gonna be a lot better complement inhibitors uh, improvements on, on some of the therapies that we have right now.